All right, boys, so in our continuing our bass boat search, uh, one of my viewers said, I know this is not exactly what you've been talking about, but I got a boat I think you should run. <laughs> so I am sitting in a bullet, a 2020 bullet. I cannot remember which model it is. I'll put it down below. It's a big, long boat. It's a skinny boat. Uh, and uh, it's got a 300 horse Mercury on the back of it. So as Tom Cruise said in Top Gun, I feel the need for speed. Okay, I just got to say, bleep, 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 bleep. So I barely leaned on it right there holding the camera because I didn't want to let it get up and get squirrely on me. And I touched 71 like that. So I'm going to lay the camera down and uh, I'm going to step on it. I got to see what this thing will do. Wow. Okay, first let me just go on record. Damn. <laughs> uh, so it touched 76.7 with me just, just barely getting in it right there. Live wells are full. I believe it's right at a half a tank of gas. A little bit more actually. Uh, actually 35 gallons of gas, so out of 50, whatever that is. And 
it will flat get it. Now, in fairness, it's a 300 racing, and I got to tell you, it had a lot of leg left in it when I came out of it because I, I barely was getting in it. Uh, man, this boat will fly. I'm real curious about the measurements and the tippiness of it. I don't have a lot of time in the boat, so I'm going to have to rush through some stuff. But uh, let's do a little examination of the boat real quick, and uh, let's see what we got here. Okay, so it's a very narrow boat. I'll get the measurements on it in a second. Um, there's, there's several things that would, that would bother me to fish out of the boat. Uh, the number one being where the, where the switches are. That, that'd be really, really difficult for me to deal with. Uh, it's, it is, look, it's a go-fast boat, right? I mean, that's what it's designed for. I will say I was very surprised. This boat only weighs 1,450 pounds. That's 450 pounds less than my boat. And I thought it would be really rattly. It's not, it, it, it really felt solid. I came across a nasty quarter chop. So it was coming off of my, uh, my port bow, a pretty nasty little chop there. And it's solid, I mean, it was hitting good. It's not at all wet. I was really, really surprised by that. Um, but again, it's a big, long, narrow boat. Um, it's got traditional box layouts. Ice chest is where it should be between the seats. Got a second little ice chest right there uh, that, that obviously he's using for sort of a day box. The boxes in the boat are absolutely huge and super duper deep. Now, as you would expect for a guy who's driving a go fast boat, he's not carrying a lot of stuff in the front end of the boat. You don't buy a boat like this to go 60 miles an hour. But if a guy wanted to go all Scott Dean on it, or Dickie Newberry, actually Dickie's better than he used to be, and put a whole, whole bunch of stuff in it, he certainly could. I'm trying to be better with my audio boys, so. Rod box, it's got an interesting setup on the rod box. No tubes as the Camus. I can't tell if that's hull or floor. But it's got just rod racks down the side. I, it's, it's not something I would ideally love. I would probably actually buy a secondary rod box and stick it back in there. You sit super low in the boat, not at all surprised. Uh, it's got those old Triton. I've talked about these before. I do not like those lids. Matter of fact, I want everything with slam lids. Slam slam latches now that I know what those are but I don't like these because invariably you will have a rod get under one and break a rod I've seen it happen too many times it's just something they ought to take out of bass boats it's got nothing real fancy in the seats but you sit down really low you're a little bit cramped in the space I mean I, I guess of course I'm quite a bit taller than Jeff so maybe that's probably why he's got his jack foot foot jack hot foot back some it's a very simple dash, it's a small dash. Obviously you couldn't flush mount anything in there, but you could put something up higher right here. You see he's got a Humminbird Helix 10 mounted over here on a balls out mount. You're about to see me put one of those in my boat. It's got traditional old school switches. Is Those are not gonna backlight, right? So in the dark, it's gonna be hard to see what you're turning on. Same thing we complained about with the charger. And also with the Camus, well, but he's got a light here, so you can turn that light on, I guess. I'm sure that's what, yeah, there it is. It was actually on. So you could probably see them based on that. Um, otherwise, traditional analogs. He's got the Mercury Smart, uh, smart Gauge in here. Uh, your little ice chest here. It's not a big ice chest. You're not going to carry a 12-pack of old Milwaukee light around out here. Real big live wells, 45 gallon live well. He's got his divider pulled out. Obviously he's team fishing. Uh, it is a, uh, what I would term a cheapy box lid. It's a little bitty glove box, but I've already had a problem getting my phones in there and getting that to latch back. That's something that could certainly be improved upon. It's got two boxes in the back, smaller than what we typically have. But then what's interesting is they put the batteries back here where it 
so you can have storage in the battery boxes on both sides. It's the same setup. So there's good prop storage down there or toolbox storage. Either one would be real easy to have right down in there. Now here is the problem that Jeff pointed out to me on this boat. We've talked about we've talked about sump access, right? Well, check this out. The term he used is if you've got to replace a uh, a bilge pump, it's a winter project. I believe you got to pull the gas tank, and he believes it too to get to your sump. So that would be a problem for me carpet it's got good carpet in it it's it's a simple boat is the way I would say it with the old school switches which I personally like I think you get less failures in those than you get in those push button switches it's very 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 fast one thing I did note that probably would bother me now I'm gonna fish in it just a little bit this afternoon but when I shut the boat down out there in the in the open in the wind as soon as I shut the boat down, the wind spun it sideways. It's 450 pounds lighter than my boat. It's actually more, more than that light because he's running the lithium batteries back there. So I'm going to say this boat, tackle and all, is easily 600 pounds lighter than my boat, which of course is why it's super fast and the fact that it's narrow. Uh, and I don't know the beam on it. I'll post it below. By the time you guys see that, I'll show you the beam on it. This ain't the boat for me, but I want one. <laughs> This would be a super fun second boat if I ever won the lottery and can have a second boat. Um, golly, that thing was just, it accelerates, just zoom, you're off and gone. You do sit a little bit higher. I talked about this in the Camus. So in the Camus, you sit more like this. And I like sitting more like this. And the reason I like that is, when I'm in rough water, I can actually give myself some padding with my thighs by lifting myself up a little bit. That's what I meant in that. I didn't explain that good in that Camus video. Same problem I've had in, in Moon Pie's Triton. You sit with your feet out in front of you and there's no way to pad it in rough water. My Ranger, you sit even higher than this and it's easier to pad yourself in rough water. Let's see what else. No driver's cleat. We've got cleats in the back. And in the front, it's got uh, it's got lights down the side. You see, he's got that TH ring. I guess I got to get one of those for my boat to lock that trolling motor. That's a good idea. It's just when you're flying around in it. Uh, retractable rod buckles. I like those. Let's measure the boat. What do you say? Fifty-two inches across the front. So, if I remember right, my boat's sixty-six or sixty-seven inches. So it's more than a foot and more narrow there, and seventy-four inches across the back. Like I said, it's a long, narrow boat. We'll see how tippy it's going to be. Standing in the middle of the boat, it's got about a one degree list to the driver's side, which is odd. I don't know why that would be, but it does. 1.1 degree list. That's that's a high two, three degree list on the front. So it's a it is a it will list on you. It's a tippy boat. That's strange. On this side, it's much, much less. I don't understand that. Somebody can explain that to me. Back here. I can't see the number, but it feels like a pretty big number. But, you know, we've seen that in the past where it felt much worse than what it really was. Step over here. Same place. That's where your co-angler might set the hook. Excuse me, your co-pro. So there's our tippy test, our listing test. You know, I just saw something that I'm sure is from the factory in this boat. Now, by the way, the co-angler, 
actually has rod locks up in there. I've seen these little nets before. That's actually a good idea. I've got a bottle of, uh, I'm gonna find those because I've got a bottle of, uh, actually I got a couple things that just kind of rattle around in the bottom of the boat all the time and that would be really easy to either put there or in some boxes where I could get stuff up out of the way and I could always get to them. My dip and dial, that's a great idea. I don't know if, if he did that himself. I suspect it's from the factory, but that's cool. You know, you you feel a little bit cramped in the boat, but again, it's in my mind, It's this is a specialty boat to me. This is a go fast boat. Now don't get me wrong. I know there are touring pros and very, very good touring pros who fish out of a bullet, but it's a specialty boat in my mind. So. Let's, uh, let's fish just for a few minutes. I don't have very long, but I'm just kind of curious how it feels fishing out of it. And uh, if, it, if I can catch a fish bigger than the 10 pounder I caught in the charger, then uh, it'll score extra points. Charger didn't score extra points for that, by the way. So uh, as I walk up the hill, getting out of breath. One thing Jeff did say, he said it's one of the easiest trailers he's ever had to bunk a boat onto. It's a stainless steel fenders. It's just a real basic trailer. That's going to be torsion axles, I'm pretty sure. Big heavy duty Fulton jack. Got a good winch on it. Swing tongue. Nice basic trailer. I even put the trailer in too deep as you guys saw but you saw how easy it bunked up that's that's how a trailer should act right there that was uh that was perfect anyway i know it's late and it's dark out but that's a really pretty boat 21 sdc is that boat brand and we'll get all the measurements up for you i did note i don't like the uh i don't like the the winch it's just not quite as beefy as the one that's on my boat and a couple other ones we tested. That Fulton, that's a really good, uh, that's kind of the go-to standard for the ones that aren't building in. So that's a good one. But uh, it's a specialty boat, but it's a lot of fun. A lot of fun. Thanks for letting me borrow it, Jeff. And I'm bringing it back in one piece. There you go. So he's running that Bravo 1. 28 pitch four blade which is i mean a lot of go fast boats they like to run four and five blades i don't know why that is because too the blades are out of the water when it's, when it's just surfing and prop so when you got it up level with the pad or above pad two blades are out of the, are out of the water every time the prop comes around that's why you can't run a three blade on them you just can't get enough bite can't get no bite it's four blade prop start sucking air all the time yeah 